My name is Veronica Wong. I'm from Toronto, Canada. I used to have MCS, multiple chemical sensitivity, and now I'm totally 100% recovered. And I just finished my level three training in Oklahoma. Um, my MCS uh, we start at the beginning of uh, 2012. And at this time, I didn't really know uh, what's going on. You know, I didn't even know the name. I just know I have a flu-like symptom, and I'm a little bit sensitive to the chemicals. And, and then I took some time off from work, and then I thought I would be, be get better. And I also um, introduced to a person who have um, sensitive, you know, and she told me, you know, how her life was, you know, and she got to isolate herself, she can't be, can't be with anybody, and I was totally, totally freaked out, because I can't do what I love before, all the activity, like dancing, I couldn't do, you know, I, I was so scared to spend the rest of my life by myself. And then after meeting that person, you know, my health just go downhill, straight like decline, you know. And getting out of the house, um, it was difficult, you know, especially at that time, didn't know what happened. Um, uh, my doctor sent me to different doctor for uh, diagnosis. It was very tough, you know, for people who have MCF to go out of the house, you know. And also at that time, doctors, they are not really educated in this area. And some of them, they even think I, I, I was crazy, I got psycho spirit in my head and also ask me how many enemy do I have, you know, at that time. And the worst moment for me, you know, um, it was um, the pain all over in my body. It could be happening in this organ, in the kidney. It's, uh, it's all of a sudden, you know. And also, um, I could not use the phone. I could not use computer, I can talk to my family, and I cannot watch TV, you know. Um, but also, even though I was very, very sick, one of my friends just could push me going back to work to say, you know, uh, you got to learn to deal with it, you know, because, um, what are you going to do with your finance, you know? So she called me every day and asked me to go back to work. You know, when you're sick, your mind is not really clear. And then I did went back to work uh, for a month and a half. But that's during the month and a half, I use all my sick day, you know, and I use my vacation. And then at one point, you know, the pain is really, really, I couldn't tolerate because it's just like a bomb exposed in my head. And at that time I thought, I'm not sure if I have a brain cancer. Um, then I talked to my, fa um, my office, I need to take a long-term disability. But of course I'm, I was not qualified. And then I have to fight with the insurance company which add more pain to my body. And then um, after nine months, finally found out the name of the illness. It's called multiple chemical sensitivity, which is good and bad. You know, the good thing is I find a brain retraining program and find a hospital, there's a clinic, it's called and my mental health clinic. So uh, the bad thing is um, a lot of negative information. Um, 
been, you know, uh, I find the brain retraining program and I start working on it, it got some improvement. Um, the MI, the mental health clinic, I was putting on a uh, 13 month waiting list. The day I got uh, to go for the appointment, I thought I have hope, you know, but actually it's not. The doctor told me, you know, you have to secure your money. Don't spend any money on any treatment. There's no cure, there's no drug. And he also suggests me to move somewhere near the ocean, which have more fresh air, and maybe your sensitivity get improved, but you never get cured. So all the improvement that I work on with another program all wiped out. When I got home, my sensitivity was really, really strong. I have to duct it all at the door to prevent the chemical to come in my, my appointment. Um, it was um, hopeless and helpless at that time. It was really sad and very depressed. Um, and then uh, I don't want to spend my rest of my life being like that. And then I start looking to, for the woman who she says she got recovered from the MCS. And I finally got connected to her and she said yes, she truly got recovered from MCS. And, and then I start working on it again. Mm. And also I connect to another lady, she got recovered too. And she also helped me a lot. Um, she also told me to get a coach. I also got a coach, you know, do, um, I have three sessions of EFT. It got a little bit improvement. And then, and then uh, I thought, you know, in certain period of time, I may get recovered. And I was planning going back to work because, you know, going back to work is not just telling my company, you know, uh, after two weeks I go back, you need to give the company two to three months notice. And I was expecting I'll get better by then. And then I start taking the uh, real stuff, the perfume, the laundry, detergent, the fiber softener to practice, you know. So I was okay for two days. And then, you know, and then I got worse. My skin got burned for, for seven days. And then when I get better, I practice again. And then it just happened over and over again, you know. And then I knew there's something wrong. I probably I need something more. And then I remember I, uh, that's one of the MCF support website. I saw people say doing the brain, brain retraining program, they finally, you know, get healed from working on faster EFT. And then I went to look for the website and I actually find a video of a testimony of how she recovered from MCS. And then I decided to register for the free seven days um, starting course. And then this is in this year, January 2015. And after the seven day courses, and I noticed there's a live seminar in February, so I'm. Um, I was supposed to go back to work in January, um, but of course at that, that time I wasn't ready. And I call my office. I say, "How about I, you know, push to February?" No, I wasn't ready. And I find the faster EFT. I, I call them again. I say. How about I come back in March? <laughs> and I said, okay. 
and I called my friend in New York, her name's Jovan, and I told her uh, my situation. I said, all oh, these uh, returning to work also gave me a lot of pressure, you know. So she told me, don't worry, just um, I want you to focus on your health. I want, just want you to recover. Don't worry about your financial situation. Just totally, totally support me. Um, so then I can register um, for the live seminar. And also we went to say um, Oklahoma City is a really fragrant city. So I prepare, I pack my stuff, pack all my bedding, comforter, my pillow, my towel to come over Oklahoma City. And before I came over, of course I, I worry, you know, because it's the seventh day out of my house. And also I was afraid sitting in the small plane with people next to me having perfume. Then I have one private session before I came over to Oklahoma City. And the next day when I got on the plane, I said, okay, that's good. Nothing triggered me, you know. Not until I came over to Oklahoma, I lost my connection of my luggage. I didn't have my bedding at that night. It was a nightmare for me. But once the session started, Robert teach me, teach us you know, how to tamp. And I also did um, five private sessions in Oklahoma, uh, which included um, two cross up fire uh, with the petitioner, Alan Comby, um, Kim and Dave Ryder, Ken Brown. And a lot of people noticed the difference from the very first day to the last day. Um, when I got home, I noticed the difference because it's, you know, before, um, before I was taking, uh, came over to the live seminar, sometimes I don't know why my chest was pounding so hard. And then I realized, oh, outside the hallway, people walk past by having perfume. And when I got home, that problem was totally gone, totally gone. And I didn't really have any bad anxiety about returning to work. Um, when I back to home, I still did one more private session of course, I tell on myself. I will return to work one week after I came to the live seminar. I start working uh, three days a week, uh, every other day. So let me have um, uh, time to adjust to the environment. And also, uh, um, I have time in between to tap, you know, uh, tap on. Um, the thing that triggered me also work on this stuff, you know, because I didn't work for two and a half years. And, um, I really forgot a lot of stuff, you know. And so I also work on, I forgot a lot of stuff. No, when I go back to work. Because the, for the two and a half year I wasn't working, I was in a deep dark hole. You were? I was in a deep dark hole. A deep dark hole. Yeah, so I went back to work. I lost oh, a lot of my skill. So I was really, really frustrated, you know? And, because I have expectation of myself too. So I tap, I tap on, I tap on, you know, the pressure from work, you know, I tap on uh, my sensitivity, you know. And 
after two months, and then I work uh, four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, and then off on Wednesday and Friday. And then at the end of June, I start working full time. And then I say for each uh, trans transition, I also tell because I was worried, oh, now I have less time to tell what, can I handle it, you know? So I tell through everything. Yeah, I went back to work on, at the end of July. No, end of June, I mean, end of June. And I also went for Greece for my level two training. And I have a lot of fun over there. <laughs> and three weeks ago, and I went to my family doctor's office. And of course, I told my family doctor I work on, you know, uh, the faster EFT um, to help me to get recover. At that time, you know, at the very beginning, I mean. And then he said, I want to tell you something. And then he said, you know what? All the time, I didn't really truly believe you. But he said, I just don't want to discourage you, you know. And if I, I say, I don't believe you, maybe you don't work on it. I say, no, I will work on it because I know people recover from it. I will take every opportunity to heal myself. You know? And he said, now I see you. I totally, I totally believe you. And he, he also said, I want to learn faster EFT. And also, he asked me, why didn't you learn the technique to help other people? There's a lot of people need your help. Yeah. And I say, I'm doing it right now. I'm learning it and I'm practicing right now. I want to say to the people, help the MCS first. And right now, I can tell you, you know, when I smell the perfume or other cleaning products, I really have a smile on my face. I smell it, I smile because I'm in control right now. I got my life back. My recover from MCS, I have to give, give a big credit to Robert G. Smith. I really appreciate he created this fantastic, awesome, faster EFT. Not only to heal the people having MCS, he helped people, you know, how to manage the stress, the emotion, to get good health in different area, not just for MCS, you know, lupus. I really appreciate the people that recover from MCS that, um, share their testimony because they inspire me, give me hope and
better song.